actually really critical that people have an adequate amount of iron, right? That being said, the way that doctors assess iron is... <laughs> I'm going to talk about a hidden cause because there was a ton of people who thought iron, iron, iron. And some people had other things like biotin, um, zinc. Other people had a lot of vitamin and mineral deficiencies. Can I ask some of the questions to you? Sure. So Margaret, she, she was one that she can represent the overwhelming responses we got about iron, first of all. Yeah. Is iron related to hair loss? And then Lauren, a follow-up question. Is it too much iron? Too little iron? Can we address iron? Well, yes. And the answer is low iron can absolutely be associated with hair loss. And it's one of the most hidden sources of hair loss. Believe it or not, our program and my videos have been really instrumental in bringing iron to the forefront of hair loss and educating people that the amount of iron really impacts on blood flow and also the circulation of vitamins and minerals into the scalp, into each hair follicle. So it's actually really critical that people have an adequate amount of iron, right? That being said, the way that doctors assess iron is <laughs> Dr. J, do you want to talk about the standard of how people address iron and really what, like and the necessity of people to understand what their true iron stores really are. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, you know, first of all, I just want to talk about the way doctors assess any labs. Let me just start there. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. You get a report and you just look for the H and the L. I just want you guys to know that like, That's this is the way we're talking. Like it, they're just looking for it, just like you, when you get your report and you're looking for the H and the L, which one's off, that's all your doctor's doing because that's what they're training. If, it, if there's not an H or an L, it's normal. I right. want to bring that back to iron because there might be, there might be the savvy doctor that looks at ferritin, uh, you know, which is a great way to assess iron. But the problem is the labs allow that to go down to like 15 points, you know, and we want to be a lot, lot, lot higher than that. So if you, you could come in at 15, 16 points, which is no iron. There's no iron available. And people and, are yeah, it's normal. It's normal. Yeah. And, and they're tired and they can't think straight and they're losing hair. And they, I mean, they're, they're exhausted and they're weak and, and, and they're like, no, it's not that. But yeah, it freaking is, you know? I'm like, wake me when you're done. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's just crapola. But the other issue for me is, yes. So you know what? Taking an iron is important, right? For most people with hair loss, they have hidden iron deficiency that they don't know about. But then the other problem is the solution is go buy an over-the-counter iron or, you know what, let me write you a prescription for ferrous sulfate. How ferrous well? sulfate. And, and that's a prescription for constipation. I just <laughs> want to say that. Bringing it back to the poop again. Uh, <laughs> Think about that. So it's ferrous sulfate. Let's just walk through this. Ferrous sulfate causes constipation. Now they're not moving the hormones out. They're getting, to they're getting toxemia from the hormones which causes more, it's just, it's just absurd. Hi, I'm Meg UMD, and I'm a functional and holistic medicine physician and the creator of the Transform and Transform Protocol. If you're interested in learning what are the root causes of all chronic disease, go ahead and click the link in the description where I have a power pack 30 minute training that goes over what are the five pillars of Transform. Go ahead, click the link, and I'll see you in that training. But here's the all thing, right. we have people on YouTube asking, how can I bring my ferritin down? How can I bring it up? And here's the thing, I'm really focused on what is the underlying root cause. And, yeah. and, and I actually teach on this. This is a full module in our, in, our, in our main transform program because there's a whole system of evaluating what is your true iron status, number one. And number two, what's really the cause? Because if you don't never fix the cause, you're always chasing it and you're always trying to um, get it to go up while you're bleeding it out or not eating it and absorbing it. But I want to focus on one main area that, um, and I'm going to ask people in chat, everybody who's an alumni to answer this. Okay. If it's not an input problem, meaning you're not a vegetarian or vegan, right? You're eating meat. If it's not an output problem, you're not bleeding it all out the other ends, then it's in the middle. Okay. It's in the middle and in the middle. Okay. What are the major causes of in the middle problem with iron that causes major iron malabsorption problems? Oh my God. Look at this. Yes. Lighten up. Digestion. Oh, There's digestion. Yes, yes, yes. Barbie. I love it. Jess. Oh my gosh. Emma. I mean, Evelyn. Okay. So the solution to iron, while yes, you can get this really good iron that actually absorbs, right? And you should, 
is to identify what's the underlying cause. And the most commonly identifiable source when people come into our program is digestion, yeah. right? If you have a broken digestion at any step and multiple steps, you won't absorb the iron, right? It's a digestion problem, dang it. And why don't people digest? Number one, genetically, people may already genetically be, be born with certain parts of the digestion that's weaker. Think about it. How many people are in families where multiple women or people in their family have had gallbladder removals? How many people are in families where there's multiple people with heartburn, right? Or IBS, right? And there is a genetic component to digestion problems, which yes, you absolutely, um, yeah, it could be genetic. But number two is it can be also iatrogenic, meaning that a doctor is prescribing you a medication and that it inadvertently disrupts digestion, right? And then one of the third, the third major category of digestion problems is food, food allergies and sensitivities, right? So digestion, food allergies, and food sensitivities are completely linked to all of these vitamin and mineral deficiencies. Okay. Cause you're not digesting it. Your gut is a war zone with all the food that you're allergic to. And then as a result, you can't not just absorb iron, but we're talking iron. We're talking biotin. We're talking collagen. We're talking all the healthy omega-3 oils. I mean, this is a huge problem between digestion and food allergies. Anybody else jump in? Kathy. Yes. Well, the one thing that I did want to add was when, when we were just talking about iron and iron levels, we were talking about, oh yeah, if your iron is down at 50, like that's a, that's a big problem. You can have iron at a level, ferritin at a level of 70 or 80 even, and have mm -hmm. that still be a cause of your hair loss. So it's not necessarily that you're in the bottom of the barrel. You can mm -hmm. have what would be considered normal levels of iron, but your yep. body in particular, you need those, those, um, you need more iron than even, than even a level of 70 or 80. And that was my, that was my experience. Mm -hmm. My, I, my ferritin was always around 70 or 80 and it wasn't enough until I put it over a hundred. That's when my hair yeah. started to come back in. Hi, and thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in actively looking for a solution to your problem and you'd like to work with us, I'm going to invite you to go ahead and click the link in the description to book a chat with our team. I and my team look forward to talking to you to learn more about you to see if we are indeed a good fit to work together. Thank you.